It is a pleasure to be joined via uh, Zoom by the chief of the West Bloomfield Fire Department, Chief Greg Flynn. Hello and welcome to the show. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Tyler. So where are you? Just uh, give us a tour of what's behind you. And it looks very fire department-y there in your shot, but what what do we have? (laughs) Well, I'm here at Fire Station 5 today, and where we were setting up this shot, the crews were all out, so I had a an empty apparatus room. And so I thought I'd give you a shot. This is behind me is the uh, gear room. So where the firefighters store their gear uh, while they're off duty. And then clearly you see some empty bins behind me because those are the firefighters that are on duty. So their gears on the trucks. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get out of the way the business at hand today that we, you know, that we have to talk about. And um, Tyler and I were talking a little bit about what happened at police precinct number three in Minneapolis. Uh, what kind of a challenge? They On Friday night, we didn't see the fire department. The building, unfortunately, has to had to burn. What kind of challenges do you think the firefighters faced there, not only trying to put a fire out, but also dealing with everything else that was going on on that scene? Sure. We've, we've talked for the past few weeks um, about this virus that we uh, can't quite track down, and, and we've really made some good progress on that. And uh, now as a uh, community, as a nation, uh, really, quite frankly, I think the news has shown us even as a, as a, a global issue, um, we're dealing with some uh, very ch- challenging discussions. And uh, that leads us to these acts, um, some of them. And, and I want to be very careful and respectful here, Dave. This is not an area that, um, that as a fire chief, uh, I want to be respectful of every word that I choose I or uh, how I frame things because this is such a volatile issue. But well, let me question- let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you then, Chief Lynn. So let me help you. Let's just talk about firefighting. Let's not talk about because believe me, there's and the, it's tempting to get into the other stuff. And it, but mm-hmm. let's just talk about firefighting for a couple of minutes and keep it simple. So. Can you imagine what it would be like to have to bring a crew? You get a you get a call from nine one one, and you have to bring a bunch of fire trucks to a West Bloomfield Police Department precinct. It's surrounded by protesters, and the it, the the area isn't safe and secure. I know you probably never get that call, but but just what do you think the fire department, uh, you know, would be thinking on a day like that? That definitely presents a challenge like you uh, highlighted there that we are not uh, well, you know, we don't have a lot of experience in that. But I can tell you that those firefighters, their first concern was was protecting. And, you know, they wanted to protect that structure there in Minneapolis. Uh, They want to protect the protesters. Uh, They want to protect each other. That's just what is in their makeup is uh, we're a helping profession. We're public servants. And what we're trying to navigate right now are, are, is an area that there are some that are using their rights to protest, and then there are others that are being hurtful. And I think those being mixed in there make it very challenging that if I was a company officer rolling up on that scene trying to differentiate on the who's who, it makes that my first priority so that we're safe to tactically address and mitigate the fire that we are, are approaching. I've got to I've got to make sure my team is safe, in order for them to mitigate the hazard that we're there to uh, to address. So this really puts a two front uh, focus for that company officer in that initial uh, size up of that scene, and that tactically is very challenging, Dave. Uh, looking in two different directions at two equally important hazards. Well, Greg Flynn, chief of the West Bloomfield Fire Department, every big major fire scene. Now, we're talking that the precinct number three in Minneapolis that burnt on Friday, and there was no fire response there on scene that we could see on TV. You know, typically when there's a major fire, that was a major structure fire. Typically, if there was a major stru- fire structure, uh, fire here in West Bloomfield or in Oakland County, yeah, the police would shut down the roads, they would isolate the areas. Don't don't you need room and safety to work and put your hoses out and and kind of spread out on the scene so you can get your work done without you know just even risking uh, the safety of people in close proximity to you in a normal situation? Sure, and you know that we've described uh, our fire trucks as uh, large toolboxes. That's really what they are. They roll onto the scene and they have every tool that we can think of to 
uh, gain access to a building, to ladder a building, to everything we need to do to, to get to where that fire is. Um, so if that fire truck isn't secure where we're going, uh, then that puts all of the tools that our firefighters need at risk as well. So that, that presents a challenge. So that's when those police officers are shutting down streets and restricting access to where those fire trucks are. That's why, and we do that on an everyday basis, just within our communities here. Um, you know, when those doors are open, stuff can fall out and uh, onto the floor or excuse me, onto the surrounding around the, uh, fire truck. So, uh, again, your questions are fair. The, uh, the real concern is that it's hard to ever know exactly what those, uh, company officers and what that incident commander, the, the, the whole public safety team there was going through. Cause I'm sure I am certain that they were addressing that and looking at and doing a risk uh, threat analysis as to what their tactics were going to be with that. Well, and then just a pure firefighting question. So you got a major structure like that. You can bring all the gear, but you need water to put the fire out, don't you? So we saw, and it wasn't mm -hmm. just that scene. I saw a lot of scenes on TV over the weekend, and I was so looking forward to talking to you this morning because I saw all these scenes, and, you know, you need water to put out a fire, and, and the water isn't always right at the fire. So, you know, you got protesters, and you don't have access to the the water that you need to put out a car fire or a structure fire, uh, what do you do? And do you always need water, or can fire departments carry enough water for a structure fire with them? So most fire engines, so an engine pumper, the ones that have a pump on it, typically carry a reserve tank full of water. Now, that tank can be as many as 250 to maybe 700 gallons, depending on the, the size of the truck. We use that water, Dave, for what's called the initial attack. And so while they're, the initial hose is deployed by our uh, initial attack crew, then that provides the engine crew time to secure a water supply. And by the time the pump, the tank water, is running out, you're now bringing in the water from the fire hydrant. And so there's, uh, that's actually a drill that we practice, that the engine crew has to, what we call tag a hydrant, they start flowing water and that engineer needs to wrap the hydrant, dress it, get a water supply, bleed it, and restore water to the engine before they run out of tank water. We drill on that. So you're correct, we have a little bit of water. Um, that's just to buy us time to get to that, that hydrant. And that's why we're always asking people to clean away from hydrants in the snow in the winter time or not to park next to them because seconds do really count there. Yeah. And uh, that's why we want to have that open access. But you're absolutely right. We need water. Well, and then and, and the point I'm getting to here is in, in watching the coverage, and it, it's hard to just make the assumption that law enforcement, the elected officials, and the fire departments are doing this, that, or the other because of political reasons or because of decisions about how to manage a crowd. It might just come down to basic firefighting. And then, then another scene, I don't know if you saw it last night on TV late, but uh, Washington, D.C., I mean, literally, uh, you know, uh, within a mile of the White House, actually closer, there was a park right in front of the White House with a building on fire. And they couldn't get the fire crew in there until the park police got the protesters out of the area. So I just, it, to me, it just seems to me, Greg Flynn, chief of the West Bloomfield Fire Department, you can't fight a structure, a fire structure, with a protest going on right in, right there. You got to get your hoses and you got to get set up. Is that a correct assumption? It is. And, and what's challenging about this conversation, Dave, is, and I think you might even sense this today as you interview other public safety officials um, when we talk too much about the strategies one of our biggest fears is when i for example say too much about kind of our operation it can sometimes invite those that want to provide harm or cause more confusion uh vulnerable spots now we're aware of these things so i mean again i'm i, I don't have any problems with any of the questions but we start to get hesitant because we are normally working in environments where people are glad to see us, where residents are coming out, clearing things out of way. They're helping mitigate the situation. And the, the situations you're describing are situations where there may be a few in that group that are out to sabotage or make things more challenging for the first responders. And uh, that's a very delicate balance that all of us in, in appointed and government uh, positions want to be very respectful because we are here to serve the public and that's really a big part of this big community dialogue that's going around going on right now is about 
some of the authority and the things that happen with uh, with your trust in government. Well, Greg Flynn, we thought it was going to be complicated talking about washing our hands and whether to wear a mask or not. Right. And look, what we, look what we have in front of us today. Let's just... And thank you for, and I realize you can't answer everything I'm, I'm throwing at you, but thank you for having the dialogue. It really helps. And, you know, I just try to help people understand what they're seeing on TV and why these things are going on and, and the fact that the national media may not give you an entirely clear picture. That's the whole purpose of the show is to talk to people like you on the front line and try to get to the bottom line of things. So um, back here at home in Oakland County, uh, and I know there have been a lot of late nights for police, elected officials, uh, fire and other first responders, even though you've not had to be out, you and your colleagues and the other amazing people in Oakland County and West Bloomfield have not had to be out responding to the kinds of things we've been seeing around the country. But that doesn't mean that, that we haven't been ready. Is that correct? Our, our jobs, uh, Chief Patton's job is on the legal side and the law enforcement uh, my side is kind of that community risk reduction. We partner together, and this this is replicated at our friends to the south in Farmington Hills, or over in um, you know uh, northern Oakland County. Uh, anywhere you go, this is how the system works. And so our job is when times are good, we think about what if times weren't good, and so we're prepared for these types of things. Uh, it just so happened, Dave, that uh, our training schedule for this week is our uh, rapid intervention teams uh, or our task force teams for uh, um, active assailant type situations. So we just received uh, earlier uh, this year uh, over $30,000 worth of ballistic vests and helmets and gear for our paramedics. Now, I wouldn't have thought two decades ago uh, when I started at the WBFD, that we would even contemplate wearing a ballistics vest or a ballistic vest. So you're on point with, hey, 11, 12 weeks ago, I think when we did our first special coronavirus, you know, breaking news kind of uh, uh, interview, who would have thought that we would be here today? But that's what your public safety officials do. They, they I think you said they pivot uh, very quickly uh, to whatever is coming their way. And I think you're going to find that it's very insightful from Chief Patton today, um, that his team is briefing on this. They're ready for this. And, and they hope that none of it happens. But hope isn't a strategy, so they plan. And uh, they come up with real tactical things that they're going to be able to do. And the FD will be there to support uh, their efforts uh, should they be called upon. Chief Greg Flynn, West Bloomfield Fire Department, thank you very much for joining us today. I really appreciate you being here. Before we so, say so long, let's uh, do a little bit of quick coronavirus update. Uh, I'll give you a chance to say make sure you wash your hands, make sure you do social distancing, make sure you wear your mask. Uh, other than the general reminders that we continue to make, any updates on the coronavirus front today? So uh, folks, I think, are, are really uh, – quick to navigate to where they can get the information now and they can see all the numbers and update. What I'd like to take in this, the last few seconds that I have with you guys is to start talking about that second wave. And when people start to get a little focused on that and, and the negativity of it, I want them to refocus on what is going to be different about the second wave than, than this initial or first wave. We understand the disease. We understand the mitigation that we can take place. We have our masks, the hospitals, the first responders, everybody, is they're increasing their PPE. We are going to be ready for the second wave. We, our, our businesses are ready for the second wave. The supply chains will be ready for the second wave. So um, when the naysayers come out and try to want to paint some doom and gloom coming for this fall, uh, as we so often, and I want to, again, highlight what you and Tyler are doing, too, as well, because you are part of that front line, because information is knowledge, knowledge is power, and, and we want our community to feel empowered and knowledgeable, and that's what you guys are making that connection with these professionals you bring on and connecting them with the public. Well, we are going to be in a good place, and our community is going to be in a good place because they're informed, and I think that's the big takeaway to start. Uh, as we relax things a bit, because they are, you can see that in the footage that you're seeing uh, on on, uh, on the news, and, and it's going to continue. But let's not dwell on that too much, because people are still washing their hands more, 
and being smart about how they're doing this. But human beings are going to become within six feet of each other. Otherwise, we're not going to be around for very long, Dave. No, they are. And they and it, let's be honest, it starts it started to happen. It was another nice weekend here in Metro Detroit. A little cool, but a lot of people got out. People are getting closer together. Uh more businesses are beginning to open up or waiting we expect to hear from the governor on the twelfth or sometime before that uh, we're gonna continue to open up. Uh more people are going back to work, streets are a little bit more crowded. So uh what you're suggesting, Greg Flynn, is in fact happening and even though we saw a really difficult weekend i what i continue to see is the amazing people a vast majority an overwhelming majority uh you know dealing with this in a very very uh community-minded way we salute everyone tuning in today today and all the other people that aren't that are just doing a great job and greg i have confidence that people um as we continue to open up our communities are going to do a good job and and we'll keep our fingers crossed that, that next wave is not too big and that we are ready to deal with it. I'm glad you're getting prepared. Thank you very much. Anything else to add today? You're welcome. Thanks for what you guys are doing. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Very good. He is the chief of the West Bloomfield Fire Department, Chief Greg Flynn.